Now the human eye is quite complex, but even with the little bit of optics that we know, we can get a basic understanding of how it works and uh, what corrective lenses are trying to do, or what they do do, because they work quite well. Let's start out by looking at some different parts of the eye. You have the front of the eye here, which is called the cornea. You have a certain uh, fluid in there. You've got the lens of the eye here. You have the iris, which is around the lens here. That's what gives you your colored. That's the colored part of the eye. Uh, the hole in the middle of the iris is known as the pupil. It's not an actual thing, even though it looks like a black dot. That's just because most of the light that goes in the eye never comes back out, so it's nice and dark. It's a good black body is what physicists would call it. We also have muscles. Now we're just seeing a cross section here, but these muscles actually surround the lens um, on all sides. You've got some other fluid in here. And the back of the eye here, this is like the CCD. This is the film that actually senses uh, the light coming in. There's a series of rods and cones, or what they're called. Uh, and you have this little spot here that's less than a millimeter in diameter. I think it's like about a quarter of a millimeter called the fovea, and that's actually where the most uh, sensory receptors are concentrated. And then you have the optic nerve, which sends the information from the retina out to the brain, and the brain actually does the processing and makes the image out of these uh, electrical impulses created from the retina. So that's the basic idea here. As far as what it does for light, the light coming in uh, the, the eye is a converging lens, so it focuses it, and you have to have images um, at the location of the retina and able to see things clearly. Um, it also turns out that the front of the eye, the cornea, is a much more powerful lens than what we call the lens of the eye. So most of the refraction, most of the bending, takes place here on the surface of the eye because it's a more powerful lens. And part of the reason for that is that you're going from air to some other fluid, whereas these other fluids on the interior here have similar indexes of refraction. Um, so there's a larger difference going from the out of the eye to in the inner eye. But still, this is a, a more powerful lens. And so you focus things on the retina there. Now, if you want to see objects that are really far away, we call them infinity. By infinity, we don't necessarily mean they're an infinite distance away. Whenever we say an object is at infinity, what we're saying is that the light rays are coming in more or less parallel. So when your lens is relaxed, then these rays coming in from far away objects will be focused on the retina if everything is working properly. Now, if you bring an object closer to a lens, what happens there is you're actually focused behind the focal point. So if this lens didn't change at all, if it was identical and you were uh, looking at light coming from a nearby object, it would focus at a point, the image location would be behind the retina. And so when it actually strikes the retina, it would strike at different locations and that is bad. You wouldn't get a nice uh, clear image that way. So what the eye does is it flexes those muscles, it actually squeezes in on the lens, those cilia muscles, ciliary muscles. Um, and what that does is it thickens the lens, which gives it a shorter focal point. So it brings the focal point in, before the focal point was right here, right? Because the focal point is dis, um, defined as where parallel rays will be focused. So it pulls that focal point in, which pulls these rays in instead of having the image behind the eye. And that's called accommodation, by the way. The ability of the eye to change the shape of the lens. Now this is quite different from what uh, cameras with zoom lenses do. Those change the focal lengths by uh, having a series of lenses. You know, you have a couple of different lenses and you will change the distance between those lenses. You're not actually changing the thickness of the lens. Uh, but the human eye will actually, and most other animals' eyes, uh, will change the focal length of the lens by squeezing it and changing the thickness of it. Now to get at how we correct vision when things aren't working properly, we first need to define a couple of things. One thing is the far point, which is, as you can see, the farthest distance that you can see. And again, we're not saying you can see objects that are infinitely far away because the light probably won't be bright enough when it gets here. But we're saying that we can focus rays that are initially parallel. 
when they enter our eye. We also have a point called the near point, which is the closest object that we can focus. So we're bringing the focal uh, point in, which brings the image location in. But if we get the, an object even closer, we're going to have to keep bringing this in. And we reach a point where we can't flex our lens, we can't make the focal length any shorter. And so even though we've got our fattened lens, we're not going to be able to focus these rays. So that point where we're just able to focus them and can't focus anything closer is known as the near point, which you can get a decent estimate at, you know, just holding up a, a piece of paper with a picture or kind of, sometimes it's easier with text. And you put it up near your eyes and then you bring it out until you can first see the text a nice, uh, sharp, clear uh, contrast. Then you can measure your near point uh, for you younger folks, it's probably quite a bit closer than this, but uh, kind of 30, 40 year olds, it's going to be somewhere around 25 centimeters, and it varies from person to person. That's just a generality. Okay, so with those definitions in mind, we have one common ailment for the eye, if you want to call it that, is nearsightedness. Now, there's nearsightedness and there's farsightedness, and I recently spoke with an optometrist. My dad's an optometrist. And by the way, why do people call optometrists eye doctors all the time? You almost never hear them called optometrists. We don't call the dentist the tooth doctor or the dermatologist the skin doctor. So my little plug here, start calling eye doctors optometrists just because why not? Anyway, um, he said that even though we, s we have the idea that nearsightedness means you can see near and not far, uh, that can be the case, but it isn't always. And same thing with farsightedness. So it's a little bit of a misnomer. I mean, it's a generality, but the, there's always, um, you know, a, a big variety of, of things that are still categorized under nearsighted or farsighted. Sometimes you could be um, farsighted, but you really can't see far away things very well. Uh, um, so anyway, here is kind of a basic overview. Uh, the far point is too close if you are nearsighted. So what we're saying there is the um, and this can happen either because the, the lens is too strong, either the, the lens itself or the, uh, or the cornea. So the optical properties of the, the eye are too strong so that it focuses it too soon. Or it's just because the eye is too elongated along this central axis here. Or it can be a bit of a combination of both. But the idea is you're going to get a blurry, um, a blurry picture here with these rays coming from a distance. And even if you try to accommodate you're going to fatten the lens here. Well, that's going to pull the focal point in, which will also pull the image location in. So that will just make things worse. And you can't get it any thinner. Uh, so you would need a corrective lens for this. And by when we say the far point is too close, well, we can't focus parallel rays. But if we have something that's closer, so the rays aren't parallel, um, these could be focused at the back of the eye. And so when they when an object first gets close enough that it will be able to be focused at the back of the eye, we call that distance. We would call that the far point. And it's less than um, less than infinity, less than parallel rays. So that's what we mean by saying it's too close. So what we do is we use a diverging lens. And most of the other diverging lenses we looked at were double concave, but that kind of looks ugly for glasses and it might not not be uh, practical for contacts and whatnot. But as I mentioned when we first looked at lenses, as long as they're thinner in the middle and fatter on the edges, it will diverge. So that's how our corrective lenses typically look. So that spreads these rays out a bit so that they can be focused at a point on the back of the eye. Now, what's going to happen to the nearby objects when we make this kind of corrective lens? Well, when these go through, uh, they might get spread out even more. Uh, I guess I should have started here closer to get spread out so that I hit my lens here. I guess most of the bending is on the cornea anyway. So these are going to be focused behind the eye, behind the retina, which you know could be bad, but you're able to accommodate. That's a really bad drawing, not symmetric at all. You're able to accommodate, so you're able to pull these in, right? And the problem was here that we weren't able to push it out, but we're still able to accommodate and pull these in. Uh, it might bring your near point out a bit, which we'll see in an example. Um, but in general, uh, you're still going to be able to see close things by, by changing the focal length of that lens. 
All right, now farsightedness is next. It's essentially kind of the opposite. We define it as the near point being too far away, but essentially the eye is not strong enough, it doesn't focus it enough, or the eye is actually too short, kind of squatty eye, so that when you have nearby objects, they focus behind uh, the retina. Now far away objects, those might um, might still be able to focus nearby, or they might focus, you know, slightly, slightly behind, but enough that you're able to to change the focal length and pull that in. But <clears throat> there will be certain objects that you can can never pull that focal point in far enough to focus. And well, everybody has a near point, but if that near point is really far away, you know, uh, instead of a 10 or 20 centimeters, if it's 10 or 20 meters, then that's bad then because everything up close is, is going to be blurry. So what we do in this case is we put a cut converging lens. By the way, we call this a, a positive lens is uh, what an optometrist would call it. And the diverging lens, they would call that a negative lens. And you can see that on your prescription or the power of the lens. It'll be plus 0.75 or minus 2.75 or whatever. Okay, so here we bend the light in a little bit. And so just enough that the eye will be able to finish bending it in and focus um, nearby objects. Now, what is this going to do to far away objects? Well, again, you're going to have some issues where those far away objects, they might get focused in too, a little bit too close now. So there are issues with, uh, with correcting farsightedness can make your, your far vision a, a little bit blurry. So there's, there's kind of always trade-offs you have to worry about when, when correcting your vision. Uh, but usually the optometrists are able to find a, a pretty good sweet spot. Uh, but you'll have some people who like to wear glasses uh, like in, when they're in a classroom so they can see the board better. Uh, but then when they're outside, it kind of bothers them because it, it makes their far away vision not quite as good. So they'll take glasses off when they're outside, but they'll wear them while they're inside, things like that. And there's bifocals and whatnot to have different prescriptions depending on where you're looking. Um, <clears throat> and that's what happens. Um, actually, let me talk about astigmatism first. So next up, we have astigmatism, where this one's a little bit more complicated. Essentially, the eye focuses more in one direction than another, so we can kind of model this as having a cylindrical lens. So essentially the light in the vertical plane is going to be focused down to a point in the vertical plane. Uh, but the light in the horizontal direction, there's not enough curvature there, so it doesn't get focused. These two ones don't bend in here to give you one nice point. Uh, so this essentially will spread out uh, the image and blur it on the sides. And this can affect both near and far vision. And uh, you can have this misshape can be on your cornea, or it can be on your lens, or it can be both. And uh, when you go to an optometrist, they have a machine called an auto refractor. It kind of makes those funny noises. It goes, dur, 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 dur. it makes those noises. It can actually measure the optical properties of your eye, and it can tell exactly how much astigmatism and what the orientation is, because this can be at different angles, um, you know, relative to the horizontal. Uh, when you're younger, a lot of times the optometrist will, optometrist will see that you have astigmatism even though it doesn't bother you and you can see just fine and that's because when you're younger your eye is really capable at compensating at flexing that lens and, and overcoming it and then when you get older uh, astigmatism a lot of times comes into play when you're in your 20s or a lot of times in your 30s you just kind of lose some of that capability to, to flex your lens and then you might need glasses, even though you had astigmatism the whole time, and your astigmatism didn't get worse. Just your ability to to overcome it, your your lens to compensate for that, um, kind of degrades over time. And then another similar thing happens. Um, and back to this idea of having your near point uh, being too far, and this typically happens when you're in your 40s or 50s and you have to get reading glasses and that's because your near point gets further and further out and that is related to also not being able to to accommodate the lens and this can be your your ciliary muscles uh, kind of losing their capabilities and deteriorating a bit but uh, particularly has to do with aging for the reading glasses where uh, the lens itself can become less flexible um, regardless of what the muscles are trying to do it just kind of hardens or it can be kind of a combination of those things going on. 
Uh, so they can correct this as well, um, and to do that, they have kind of a, a, a cylindrical-shaped corrective lens, but in this case, you want it oriented in another direction, right? I don't know if I can draw this well, but kind of imagine this as your cylinder. So you get it to focus in the direction that your eye isn't naturally focusing. And <clears throat> for glasses, you know, it doesn't really matter, but for contacts, astigmatic corrective contacts are a little more complicated because regular contacts can be oriented in any direction and they work just fine but these ones have to be oriented in one direction and so what they do is they weight them a little bit on the bottom so um, it's not like they instantly turn that way but as you blink over uh, a bit of time they will naturally align themselves in the correct direction but uh, if you ever known anybody who has astigmatism and has contacts to correct it when they first put them in things are blurry for a little while and it's kind of a, a pain as they're waiting for for them to get oriented in the right direction. Okay, one last thing we're going to look at. Um, if you've ever opened your eyes underwater and without goggles on, now if you're in a chlorinated swimming pool, that kind of stings. But you know, if you really want to win that game of Marco Polo or whatever, you m might have to do this. Um, <clears throat> it uh, you you'll notice that your vision is really quite blurred, and one of the reasons for that is kind of I mentioned in that first slide is you get a lot of refraction because of the difference in the indexes of refraction. But if you have water as one of your, as one of the media that the light rays are traveling through, now the index of refraction, I think for the cornea it's like 1.36 or something, I don't know. Um, so the indexes of refraction are a lot closer, so you get a lot less refraction, and so that pushes the focal point way back or the image location. Uh, whereas if you're wearing goggles, now you preserve this uh, this air boundary, and so that's one of the reasons why things are much more clear when you're looking in water with goggles than just straight with your eyes. All right, on to some calculations.